Hello and welcome to another episode of this Fiat Ducato budget camper van build. In today's video we're going to take a detailed look at the off-grid wiring system. We're going to be looking at how we generate the electricity, how we store it and how we can provide both 12 volt DC and 230 volt mains for our camper van conversion. I'll briefly discuss each component and why I've chose it and then we'll look at how they're all connected together. So the first thing we're going to look at is how we're going to generate the electricity and by far the best way of doing that is with solar panels. With any other means of gaining electricity, whether that be hook up, running your van with a DC to DC charger or even having a portable generator outside your vehicle, there's a cost involved, whether you're paying for the electric or you're paying for the fuel to run an engine. With solar panels, although you've got an initial capital cost, after that the energy is completely free from the sun. So in that way, the system will pay for itself in no time at all. For this budget build, solar panels have advanced in technology greatly and efficiencies are improving all the time. I've selected some Renergy 175 watt solar panels. They're nearly 22% efficient, which means the footprint is much smaller. They won't take up as much room on top of the van and they'll provide more power for the given footprint. These panels only measure 1260mm by 700mm, so they're much smaller than the previous ones that we've used, and they give off more electricity. Currently these panels only cost £129 each, so that's less than a pound per watt. And if you look at typical campsite charges for electric hookup, let's say £5 a day is a conservative amount, these panels would actually pay back for themselves within about 50 days. So now we need somewhere to store the electricity and then we need some batteries. And again, for this budget build, I've selected AGM Leisure Batteries, which are a lead-based battery. And from experience from our other van, I'm still using the same AGM batteries that I installed in that van five years ago. I've made sure that the voltage has never dropped below 12.3 volts, so that's kept them at about 70% full, and in doing so has given me nearly 2,000 cycles over the last five years, and the batteries are still working really well. So that proves this is definitely the most economical solution and perfect for our budget build. Yes, of course, lithium batteries do have advantages in their size, weight and capacity, but purely on cost basis, these AGMs work out financially far better in the long run. Now, because this is a medium wheelbase fan, we haven't got a lot of space on the roof. I've got enough room to put a couple of panels up there, so I'm probably going to need an alternative source of generation. So we're going to look at using the van starter battery and the alternator when driving with a DC to DC charger as a second source of charge in our leisure batteries. When you're driving your camper van, the engine is turning the alternator, which in turn is generating electricity and a voltage of about 14 and a half volts, which is running all the electrical stuff on your van while it's driving. And it's also recharging your starter battery. So what we can do is we can tap into that starter battery and that alternator power and use that to charge our leisure batteries as we drive along. Now normally you would use an MPPT charge controller for the solar panels and you'd use a DC to DC charge controller for the alternator power, requiring two separate pieces of equipment to wire this system together. But I'm going to propose to use a Renergy DC to DC charger that has an inbuilt MPPT solar charge controller, all in one box. The cost of purchasing this combined DC to DC charger and MPPT is much cheaper than buying separate items and the wiring is also going to be much simpler too. When selecting a suitable charge controller you need to look at the specification for the max input, for the maximum input in power in watts and for the max input in voltage. This particular controller has a maximum input voltage of 25 volts. So we're not going to be able to wire the panels in series as we have done previously. These panels will need to be wired in parallel. 
So we need to connect the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative. And there are some simple MC4Y connectors that will allow you to do this really easily. They're IP67 rated, so they're suitable to be outside on the roof of your van. The water won't get in there. And then in line on the positive, we will put an inline fuse. This is a 30 amp cartridge fuse, which will protect that positive coming down to the controller. I'm also going to install a double pole isolating switch inside the vehicle because all the time that the solar panels are in the sun, they'll be generating some electricity. So with that double pole isolator, I'll be able to break both the positive and the negative if I want to work on the system or if I just want to isolate the solar panels. During the installation, that switch will be left in the off position until we've got the leisure batteries connected to the controller first. We'll talk about cable sizing and fuse sizing in a few minutes. The nominal voltage of the leisure batteries is 12 volts and the ones I've selected for this vehicle are 110 amp hours each. So to connect those together, we also need to wire those in parallel. That means a cable from the positive to the positive and another cable from the negative to the negative. That keeps the system at 12 volts DC, but that adds the amp hours together, making our total capacity 220 amp hours storage. We then simply connect the positive out of the charge controller to one positive on the first battery with an inline fuse. And then we connect the common negative from the charge controller to the negative on the second battery. The reason that we wire to the first battery on the positive and the second battery on the negative is to use both batteries as one whole string. So that ensures that the electricity has to flow through both evenly. And that way we're not using one battery more than the other. And this will prolong their life. And then to complete the charging side of this system, we just need to connect to the vehicle battery. So we go from the positive out on the vehicle side of the charge controller to the positive on the battery with an inline fuse again for protection. And then from the common negative again to the negative on the vehicle battery. And that completes the charging from the van. So now you can see with that single controller in the middle of this diagram, it's really simple to wire this whole system. We've got solar generation coming into one side of the controller. We've got generation from the van when the van's driving coming into another side and then off of the controller to our leisure batteries. So with this one combined charge controller, we can meter both of those sources and charge our leisure batteries accordingly. And one of the really great features of this combined charge controller is that when the vehicle's stationary and the solar panels have charged the leisure batteries fully, it will then start trickle charging your vehicle battery, making sure that your vehicle battery is always fully topped up for when you need to start your next journey. So for cable sizes on the solar side, the 4mm PV cables that come fitted to the solar panels are adequate for individual panels. But when we wire them in parallel, the amps get added together. So on the single cable, the amps is going to be in excess of 20 amps. So we need to increase that single cable to a 6mm PV cable. The fuse in the common positive is going to be a 30 amp inline fuse, which is about the maximum rating for MC4 connectors. So you won't want to put many more panels in parallel than that. And the rating of the double pole isolator needs to be above the rating of any of the fuses. So as a minimum, I would go for a 32 amp rated isolator. Cables and switches always need to be rated higher than the fuse rating. The fuse needs to be able to blow first to protect all the other elements in the system. Because of the C rating of AGM batteries, or the charge rating, I've selected the 30 amp combined charge controller because I don't want to put too many amps into these batteries. So based on 30 amps, I've calculated that the cables to the van battery and the cables to the leisure batteries both need to be 16 millimeters. Each circuit will be protected by 40 amp fuses. 
So that completes the generation side of our off-grid system and the storage side. So we can generate power from the sun or while we're driving the camper van and we can store that power in a couple of AGM leisure batteries. Now to use that 12 volt DC power in the van we're going to need to distribute it to all the appliances. So we need to install a blade fuse holder. This has one supply, positive and negative, to the blade fuse holder and then it has multiple outlets which are all individually fused. Previously I located this blade fuse holder in the garage and ran all of my cables from my appliances back to that location but obviously that involved running a lot of cable throughout the van. For this camper van to keep costs down I'm going to locate the blade fuse holder local to where it's needed i.e. near the kitchen as that's where most of the power is going to be required and then I'll just run a single set of cables from the leisure batteries to that blade fuse holder to make it remote from the batteries and to save on all that cabling. I'll connect a positive and negative to the leisure batteries, run that through the van and connect it to the blade fuse holder. And I'm going to protect that circuit with a 25 amp fuse. You'll notice that I've taken the positive off the second battery and the negative off the first battery in fact, the opposite battery to where I'm charging. And the reason I've done that is I'm charging on one side of the battery string and I'm drawing the power off the other side of the battery string. It ensures even use and longer life. And then from the blade fuse holder, it's simply a case of taking an individual positive and negative to each appliance. You can have a look at my previous wiring diagram to see how that's done but it is simply just one positive, one negative to each appliance, taking into account the power that each of those appliances needs in order to size the relevant cable and fuse sizes. The blade fuse holder will provide 12 volts DC for most of the equipment within the camper van, such as the ceiling extract fans, water pumps, any light fittings, or any 12 volt cigarette sockets or USB charging points. These will all be connected to that blade fuse holder. There may be a requirement in the van for two 30 volt mains to plug in a laptop or maybe for a television or something similar. So we need to be able to generate two 30 volt mains power from our leisure batteries. And for that purpose, I'm going to be installing a 1000 watt inverter. You need to be careful when choosing a suitable inverter not to go too big for your battery capacity. Batteries have a C rating, which is their charge and discharge rating. And a lot of batteries won't actually discharge sufficient amps to power these large inverters. Most of the appliances that you'll need to run, whether it be a TV or a laptop, only need 100 or 150 watts of power. They don't need a massive amount of power. So unless you're running an induction hob or hair dryers or boiling water, you don't really need a lot of mains electric. So it makes sense to keep the inverter as small as possible. If you are looking to use a lot of electric appliances in your van, then you really need to look at using lithium batteries as lead based batteries will not deliver enough amps to power the inverter. The inverter takes its power from the batteries with a positive and negative connection. Again, on the discharge side of our battery string, so the same terminals that we connected the blade fuse holder to. We take a positive to the inverter, protected by a 100 amp fuse, and we take a negative to the batteries to the inverter to complete the circuit. Because of the size of the inverter, we could potentially be drawing a lot of amps. So the cable size needs to be a lot bigger. In this case, I've selected 25 millimeter battery cable, and that's protected by a 100 amp fuse. On the outlet of the inverter, it has a simple three pin socket. So you'd plug a normal three pin plug into there, connected with some 2.5 mil three core flex. I suggest using Arctic Blue as it's very robust for camper van installations. This will provide you with a means of plugging in your devices remote from the batteries. This particular inverter also comes with a remote on off switch 
indicated by that little device connected with the green control cable. You can run that into the living area of the vehicle so that you can turn the inverter on and off as you need it. It's always wise to keep the inverter turned off when it's not in use and it stops it drawing power when you're not using it. Now a really great feature of this Renergy inverter and one of the main reasons that I chose it is that it has a mains input as well as the battery input. So you can connect your electric hookup cable onto the inverter such that when you're on a campsite and you're plugged in, the output of the inverter is fed directly from your hookup and it's not drawing power from your leisure batteries. There's an automatic changeover with inside the inverter, so as soon as you plug into a campsite and turn on the hookup supply, it'll automatically change over and all the sockets in the van will be fed off that hookup and not drawing power from the batteries. And then as soon as you disconnect that hookup, it will revert back to drawing power from the batteries. And it does say that this is like a UPS, so it's a no brake change. So you can have a device plugged in in the van, you could unplug the hookup and the device would still be powered up by the batteries without any brake. In our previous van, I did a similar system to this with a manual changeover switch and made a control panel that was quite complicated to be able to do this myself. But having this inverter with the automatic changeover does everything all in one box. Really simple and easy. Everything on the 230 volt main side will need to be earthed. So make sure that you connect your live neutrals and earth cables to all of your sockets, plugs and right the way back to your electric hookup. The case of the inverter often needs to be earthed as well and usually you'll find a grounding pin on the inverter case for that purpose. It's very important to earth these 230 volt sockets and appliances because the potential for harm with such higher voltages is much greater. I do plan to do a dedicated video on earthing and grounding of off-grid camper van wiring systems because there is quite a lot of confusion between grounds, earths, 12 volt and 230 volt systems and what's actually required in a camper van. So I'd like to do a dedicated video on that just to clear up a few of the common mistakes. And finally on this camper van I just want to talk about an emergency backup method of charging. As with our previous camper van, we had a mains battery charger installed in the garage, such that if we'd gone for long periods without any sunshine or we're sitting in the shade for any length of time and the leisure batteries were really depleted, we could go onto a campsite, plug into the mains and then turn on our mains battery charger and recharge the leisure system directly off of the mains. And in the five years that we've been living off grid, we've only actually needed to do that a handful of times. The solar system works so well. But when we have needed to, the portable power technology battery charger has worked so well. I'm really impressed with how good it is that I'm going to put one in this new van as well. A slightly smaller version, only 15 amps. So it's slightly cheaper in initial cost to purchase, but it just works really brilliantly. And I'll put some links in the video description of all the products that you see on this wiring diagram if you want to purchase them for your own camper van conversion. So there we go. I think that's just the perfect installation for a camper van if you want to be off grid. It's got a couple of means of charging the batteries, a couple of means of using the power. All of the devices combine multiple functions to keep the cost down and to make the wiring installation very simple. So I really do hope you enjoyed that video. Please do give me a thumbs up if you liked it. If you know anybody else that needs assistance with their wiring, please share them a link to this video. And if you have any questions about anything that I've shown you today, or you'd just like to say thanks, please do so in the comments section below. I'll do my very best to get back to every single one of you. And it just remains for me to say thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you soon. Cheers.